Welcome to the Deaf Portal Awards 2022, the first interview with our jurors. This year, we have 11 jurors, and I'm interviewing first three of our jurors, and Gentle, and Ryu, and Alvaro Navarro. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So first, short introductions. Anne is a, an industry-recognized author. Your books promote collaboration among developers and writers. You work as a developer experience manager at Cisco DevNet, the developer program for Cisco platforms to connect, secure, and automate. Thank you for being a juror and uh, for being here today. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. So yeah, I work at Cisco and I manage developer advocates, API documentation, and we work across multiple um, engineering teams to produce developer.cisco.com, which is our developer portal. So I'm always looking at developer portals to see what's, what's happening in the industry. Um, I'm of course super interested in it for research for my book, um, which is about using GitHub and those kind of like developer-based techniques for authoring as well. So it's very, very close to the code, very close to developers. So I'm always on the lookout. So being a juror is just a an opportunity to keep reading, keep doing research. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I'm happy to happy to dive in. Mm -hmm. And your book is now at its third edition, fourth? Yes, I am waiting for the print proof literally to show up at my house so I can approve it. And um, our second today is Anthony Wu. Anthony works as developer relations lead at Myro, yep. and you're calling in from Amsterdam. How are you doing? And I, well, most people who are here probably know you from prior API The Docs presentations. So what are you currently doing at Myro, and, and um, how do you look at developer portals now? So yeah, as you said, I've been involved in the API industry and in general developer relations industry for about 10 years. Uh, I participated in various API to docs events. Um, I used to be on the other side of the world submitting our developer portal. We used to work with Alvaro and Rutring as well and got a award for that. And moving to the jury part uh, has been super interesting. It's really looking at it from a different eye and realizing a lot of things that I was seeing as someone submitting or building a developer portal is very different as looking in detail and looking at so many other developer portals. It's also a very good learning opportunity. Uh, I'm not doing research as Anne, but we're trying every day at Miro to improve our developer portal and in general, the developer experience. And being able to learn from so many very good developer portals has been really, really, uh, really good. And that's learning that I can bring back to my teams, share with them, and we can improve what we have. So, so far, I really liked it, as well, it was a good opportunity to work and collaborate again with Alvaro and meet Anne. So, so far, very, very excited. And Alvaro Navarro currently works at Spotify for developers. And you're an open source lover. And for over a decade, you worked developing and advocating technologies at companies such as Airbus and Amadeus. How is your experience so far as a juror? Has been great. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for joining this uh, amazing Developer Portal Awards. Um, yeah, so I had the opportunity to work uh, together with Anthony uh, and Amadeus, working with APIs, Developer Portal. So uh, based on all this experience, uh, and uh, we're helping a lot to, to assess uh, the, all the, the nominees of the Developer Portals. And also right now that we are working continuously improving our developer portal at Spotify, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to bring all this knowledge back to, to, to the company and also to the, uh, to the awards. So yeah, thank you for the, for the opportunity. We are honored and thank you for joining. What are the approaches, and I asked first Alvaro, um, what are the approaches that you really liked from the nominees? What are the, the particular qualities that, that struck you? Yeah, I really like the, the ways on developer portals have, uh, have implemented, uh, for example, interactive examples to help developers understand their product. But also, um, I would like to mention one developer portal that implemented something that, that the, I'm not used to see very often is uh, an anonymous sandbox, which uh, allow developers to make API calls without creating an account. That is uh, amazing. And as I said, this is something that we are not used to see. And this is a re really, really great idea. 
Yeah, maybe and, I can add on that. I have yeah. very, very similar <laughs> feedback than Alvaro. Uh, the first thing that I was really, that I really pleased and I really like is I see many developer portal um, trying to make the onboarding process as simple and as quick as possible. Uh, there is one developer portal that has been amazing in doing that. It's the platform OS one. They have a one-click setup. You can literally set up all your environment and start playing with it in, in a second. And that was fantastic. Uh, I really liked as well the part of being able to start testing, the one you mentioned, Alvaro, the anonymous uh, sandbox, where you literally you go to the developer portal, you access the interactive documentation, and you're able to test it right away. There's literally no barrier to test. And that was uh, very, very good. Um, if I remember well, that was Fiserv. Um, and yeah, correct. the other thing that I would like to highlight as well is, and I think that's improvement that I've seen over the last year, is there are more and more visual testing. They're offering more visual way of testing in, instead of just, there is this thing when we've been accessing a lot of text based start portal, we spend our life reading JSON. It's really refreshing to see companies that are bringing a new layer to that. And the, the one you name Alvaro, which you have a demo application visual demo application you can play with that is linked to the documentation next to it, I found that brilliant. And that improved a lot the developer experience. Uh, so yeah, big kudos to oh, yeah. Chase, I believe, on that. Yeah, so that's the one that really, really struck me was that people were working really hard on use cases, which I know are hard to come up with you have to really think about interactions, think about what the users really want to do, and then code it. And I think the Chase one absolutely stuck out to me. It's interactive in the browser. It's very step-by-step -step still. And you know, explaining to anyone who, even if you're new to FinTech or you kind of have to think through, well, what is my app really doing? Um, it just was a great visual and very, you know, self-explanatory. I really, really appreciated that mm -hmm. one. And if you think about it, it's very inclusive as well, right? It means where before you needed to have some more technical background or being able to browse into these APIs, having a visual layout on that, it invites many other different persona or people have different backgrounds. So yeah, that's true. The other one that I think, Alvaro, you might have kind of, like the idea that struck that struck me as well is the idea that not all of us want to trade our data for information necessarily. So I think we're all getting more aware of that. And so the site that was like, you don't, you know, cookies are just for eating. <laughs> There's no cookies on the site. <laughs> like all three of yeah. us were like, wow, this is great. And I think that was another sort of central theme that you know we we felt like, oh, you know what, just, you know, to be a developer, you don't have to feel like there's this transactional, here's my information for some information. So that one uh, was just, all three of us just was, it was a jaw dropping moment. What would be the one feature beyond um, cookies are for eating <laughs> that to name that, that used to be a novelty like the ones that you just mentioned um, years prior. And I am really glad to see that it's becoming kind of the standard expectations from a dev portal. I think I have two that comes in my mind. The first one is the one we mentioned before, interactive documentation and interactive reference documentation became now a standard when if you look at a couple of years back, it was not. Uh, and that for me, that was one of the biggest uh, improvement in developer experience, not having to set up a developer environment just to discover or test quickly something. Uh, this has that's has been a very, very good improvement. And what comes with that as well, there are some API products that work in a very complex industries. I can think about finance, for example. And they've been able to browse to bring sandbox environments that replicate the finance industry to be able to test these APIs. Where in the past it was almost like, well, if you're not part of that industry, you cannot really test anything. You cannot really discover that. All these sandboxing, which is free and accessible to everybody in a simple way for these APIs, for me has been a big revolution as well that I'm very happy to see. And I think that now sandboxing became part of a, a standard requirement when you build API products, which was not a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. I think that's very true. And I, I think, uh, you know, infrastructure accessibility is super important in, in you know, one of our catchphrases is not that everybody has a million dollars worth of Cisco gear laying around. 
And so it is part of that accessibility everywhere. And I think one that really you know stood out to me is the Mercedes-Benz site where they sandbox and you can bring your own car. That was amazing. I'm like, okay, time to go get a Mercedes because <laughs> that's a great developer experience. So I, I do think just you know sandboxing, accessible infrastructure, um, just making gear available is is just what everyone needs. Uh, software developers, infrastructure engineers, if you're in DevOps, it, it, it actually encompasses a broad, broad array of technologists. Yeah, I fully agree. I think the, one of the most interesting things are the uh, interactivity uh, with the developer portal. Uh, to me, the, I mean, the, the biggest or the most interesting one is the examples, but also the API reference that in the past used to be something static. And now uh, having the you know typical API reference where you can make API calls, modify the, the parameters, et cetera, is like a standard for a, every developer portal. I think that that's super important. Um, one of the things I really love that is um, like, again, and the standard these days is multiple programming languages when, you know, uh, reading examples, uh, not focus only on the two, three typical programming language, like, okay, so this is enough for everyone. So now it's like, we try to cover all the different profiles, personas uh, from the developer community. And that's super, super important. When you say interactive and you, you're really happy to see more interactivity on portals, when you say interactive, where does that start? What what is interactive? I think that's a fair query in line of in line of questioning because you you want as a developer to be able to try things out, but product to product that could vary widely. So you know, and where the user starts from their own knowledge. So you know, we use the term hands on a lot at Cisco, but if they don't have a basic knowledge of even Linux, that might be a barrier, right? So for us, interactive is um, even as far as like a terminal browser, a terminal window inside the browser, all the way up to access to, you know, infrastructure behind the scenes. But I think the, the you know, standard that everyone expects is try it out. That button has yeah. become interactive which means I click a button in a web browser and I get a response. I'd love to hear your 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 all thoughts though too. Yeah, I am pretty aligned with that definition of uh, interactive. And uh, yeah, for us, it's kind of the same. So in, um, interactivity is when you uh, use a developer portal, for example, to perform an API call, you get a response and that response helps you to really understand the schema, for example, of the, of the API. Uh, or you have, uh, as we have seen in many, many uh, developer portals from the nominees, uh, you have a small example that you can tweak, you can modify a little bit, and that uh, invokes a call in the back end and that's uh, modifying the front somehow, right? So you can really understand how this API is uh, uh, modifying the behavior of the of the client. That's, to me, the, the level of in interactivity that uh, really helps when understanding a product. Yeah, I, I will define it about the doc, the developer portal interactivity is everything I can do without having to set up an environment by just playing and clicking around. That will be my expectation for developer portal interactivity. As soon as I need to set up a developer environment and run some programming languages, run a framework and so on, then I have to do a lot of things on my side. And I'm not anymore on the developer portal, I'm out. If you embed something on the developer portal, the try out, for example, is a good example, but you could have as well as you know, a JavaScript editor embedded, and I just have to click around, and that works. A demo app, which is embedded. I'll still consider interactive because I can click around and play. Is there a flip side to this? Something that's becoming standard and you wish it didn't? That's a tough one. There's a <laughs> lot of uh, Swagger UI that's yeah. not really stylized. So to stand out, the ones that sort of look like Swagger UI, but they had, you know, definitely stuck to something that was their brand, uh, maybe added some little bit of um, flair that made you know, I'm on the TomTom Tom site. Um, I think one of their pointers turned into a, a, a geo pointer, right? So anything you could do to just make your reference docs not 
the thing you see everywhere that that would help mm -hmm. any pet peeves out there anthony <laughs> I was actually thinking about Swagger as well, uh, because I mean, uh, implementing and integrating an API reference is not easy. Uh, and many developers portals, uh, you know, choose for, to integrate Swagger UI, which works fine, brings many functionalities out of the box. But if you don't, you know, tweak a little bit the UI part, the integration with the rest of the of the portal, the, I mean, from visual perspective, doesn't look good. And yeah, that's something that many I've seen there, uh, you know, uh, many, many times. Mm -hmm. I have one, it may be a little controversial, but uh, OpenAPI specification brought a lot of very good things uh, and automation, which means now almost all developer portals have client libraries, which is fantastic. And they have many languages. The part the difference I've seen is many companies decide now to use only the auto-generated version of the client libraries. And do not, I mean, many of them decide to not invest as much in building the high quality uh, handcrafted uh, SDK because now you can scale in many programming languages with automation, which is fantastic. But I felt that when you try some of them, you feel on the developer experience that is still a generated code. It doesn't offer such a fantastic developer experience. So I'm very happy to see more of this. I'm very happy to see more automation. I just hope we're going to find as an industry right balance between automation and as well offering good, high quality um, developer experience for, for the users. I agree. That's mm -hmm. investment, and that's you know really having empathy for the developer. And is there um, are there processes or solutions that you wish you we could see more of? Even though maybe we can we can acknowledge that the times are not yet ready for it. So when it's not necessarily a question of money, maybe a question of culture, maybe a question of legislation, or the missing technical piece. That's just not there yet. We can imagine, you can imagine, but it cannot be, for some reason, it cannot manifest yet. Do you, do you have an idea for things like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I can go first if you if you want. Um, so I would love to see more developers, developer portals paying more attention to accessibility. That's to me one of the things that I really miss uh, in many developer portals. Um, is the time already here? I'm sure it is. Um, so probably it's a matter of you know resources, time. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I think it's important to make developer portals inclusive for everyone. That's the one that sticks out to me as well, and I, I think it goes hand in hand with inclusive language. Um, that is accessibility for all, and it's and it's inclusive language for you know abilities for humans or humans for you know race for gender gender is not binary and i just think that the the teams that applied in accessibility nearly all of the applications also mention inclusive language so i know these are in our circles definitely being thought of hand in hand which is what we want to keep striving for because i do believe that is the encompassing sense is this is about you know, bringing more um, people to your site and letting them work on it, work on the tech there. Yeah. For me, when you're talking about uh, the inclusive experience and the the accessibility, I'm very keen on cognitive accessibility, both in the uh, official meaning of cognitive accessibility, but also in the everyday meaning, as in this is a wall of text and please give me a drawing. These seem to be conflicting with each other, but we still do see a lot of text on these pages where not everybody's necessarily thinking in words. What is your opinion on this? Uh, I, I fully agree. I would love to see more visual representations of concepts in general, more diagrams, more graphics that will help people to visually understand things without having to read pages of text. If we look at the, the current developer portals we have, most of them are heavy text-based. Uh, it means you have to go through pages of pages of explanation to understand concepts. They have very little, very few images, very few diagrams. And if it's the case, everything is still very static. Most of them are screenshots. They are not um, customized for the, for the onboarding. They are not customized for what I'm looking for. I would expect to be able 
similar on when I experience an API reference to be able to see a visual representation of the data, not always have to read JSON. But as well, when I read about use cases or what, are the, what the product does to have visual representation, diagrams, graphics, you know, images that help me to quickly in an eye to be able to understand what it is and convince me to spend more time reading these pages. Uh, and there's still very few of them. It's still an industry that were heavily text-based. You know, I was looking back through our uh, sheets even last night to jog my memory on the visual design. And the visual design is still very beautiful on the starter pages and the sort of orientation to a developer portal. But then you go to the documentation, it's like visual design just falls by the wayside. The, we even had to struggle on a lot of pages to find a graphic to judge it, I feel. So I, yeah, even going back through notes yesterday, I, I thought, oh, wow, the visual design, there was a lot of it on the portal. Then you get into the docs and you kind of, it's a wasteland even, unfortunately. So it's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the idea of having more diagrams and images in the documentation, but uh, as long as these images has a you know well-defined purpose or and and help developers to understand something in particular, I think it's fine. It's not for the sake of having more colors and you know images in the documentation. Very true. So Thank yeah, you. and I agree. I mean, we are used to see uh, developer documentation based on text because I think is what developers are used to consume. Let's say. But uh, probably we can think about uh, uh, you know uh, an approach of providing more visual content that helps developers to understand uh, what's going on. I do agree hundred percent with what Anne Navarro said. Um, maybe I can add to that a better or more localization. Um, I think it's still a standard expectation that everybody speaks a decent level of English to be able to use technical products. Um, when you think about it, what's the percentage of the world of people that really fully or fluent of very good in English. Many people might understand high level what it means, but if they were on to dig into the product, that's a big barrier. And language is one of the biggest barrier to collaborations and most probably one of the biggest barrier as of being inclusive in the product. So more and better localization would be fantastic to see. I don't know if we're ready for that because we understand that technically it's difficult, uh, but I will see uh, it will be a very good step forward for the industry. And another one that I could think of, it's maybe a little bit more technical and linked to what we talked about before. There's still this, very often this process when there's the need of creating an account and providing some data, like an email, validating the email. And there are a lot of steps that are still there before even discovering what the product is. And that's a big buyer when you think about it. Not everybody has time to invest to just discover if something is good or not. Uh, and by asking all these steps, uh, before just letting them discover and test it, um, you're potentially losing uh, future developers that would have been interested by your product. And it's something that was the case long time ago. I see it getting better, and we saw a very good example of the anonymous sandbox, but it's still not an industry standard. Uh, and it's still some for some complex industry where you still to need to request access and you have some validation processes. Um, I think I will I would love to see in the future more standardized processes or tooling that you can just try out of the box without zero barrier for option. And then you can decide to create an account. And then if you want to invest and you're ready to invest in the product, that's the right moment to provide some of your personal data, like an email. But before that, I'm always like, oh, do I really want to create an account, validate the email, just to see, create a developer app, get an API key, just to see what it does. Oh, that's still there. It was there 10 years ago and it's still there. And I hope in the future, these barriers will slowly disappear. One that is a peer, at least I've not seen in a long time, which a couple of years back was almost normal, is to test a free product. You had to give your credit card. And that was driving me mad. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen that lately, lately. So at least things are moving forward. But that feels that like, hey, test it for free, but give us your credit card information. Like, what? Yeah. Like, credit card should not be your identifier. And not everyone has one. Yet, Very true, true. so yeah, you're true. cutting off a lot of students. That's not a right, you know. That's not the barrier to entry you want either. Yeah. So I think the industry has moved forward from the the idea that a credit card is your ID. Yeah, there are countries, big countries, that it's not easy to get access to a credit card, or you cannot. 
So that's you literally remove them for the potential users of your product. Right. So that would be kind of a wow experience if the onboarding would be more seamless, no demanding data and, and inclusive. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this interview and also for your um, participation as jurors. Um, well, we know, uh, but it's probably from the outside not apparent how many hours and hours and weekend hours and evening hours went into this and how, many, how deeply you had to inspect some portals, uh, especially where the chase was really close because they are all awesome. And then it's hard to choose who's the winner this year. I want to take a moment to recognize how much work you all put into this year over year. I've been a juror over the years and seen how much work you've put into the assessment sheets, how much smoother the process has gotten year over year. You all are doing a great service to the entire dev portal industry. So I want to take a moment to recognize that as well. This helps all of us so much and to see how much yes. you all grow this over the years is just wonderful. So thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And your whole team. Thank you. Yeah. I, I feel you. very honored that we can enable this. I, I think for enablers, um, this would not be possible without the work of the jurors. Yeah, thank you very much, you your team. You make the process as well feel very, uh, it's seamless, but it's seamless, but as well, you feel like, if you're about being of a group, belonging to a group and participating in something that is giving back as well to the community, so offering mm -hmm. us a chance to give back after so many years, uh, that I appreciate a lot. But as well, I really enjoy the sessions, the way the communications handle all the processes and so on. Yeah. It felt refreshing and energizing working on that. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for your passion with us. You know, we have to coordinate three different calendars, uh, three two different time zones. Uh, it is not easy yeah. at all. So yeah, thank you for that. <laughs>